blocking out distraction, focusing under pressure. One of the things I love about you from, from my time as a, as, as a performance psychologist at Aston Villa is that you weren't afraid to work on the mental and emotional side of the game. A lot of players and coaches out there think about that as there's this stigma, yeah. isn't there, that it's a weakness, that you go and see a psychologist if there's a problem, or if you do yeah. go and see a psychologist, then that must mean that you're weak. But obviously it's the opposite, isn't it? It's the biggest show of courage yeah. and strength to absolutely maximize performance as a, as a player. Why did, you, why did you believe working on the mental and emotional side of your game as a player was important for you? Uh, I just think it's a huge, huge part of the game, the mental side of the game. Um, you know, it's a massive, massive factor on, on performing well in training every day and performing as well as you can on a Saturday. Um, you know, it, it wasn't the case when I went to see yourself or, you know, I've had a, another one but previous to you before we met um, that I was struggling in any way, shape or form. Lucky enough, you know, I, I, that hasn't happened to me in my, in my life, in my career. Um, it was more, you know, looking for them kind of extra, extra inches, extra yards to try and improve myself. You know, every single day, you know, I'd work on my technique or go to the gym and work on my you know, physical strength or whatever it may be. But footballers always seem to work kind of from their, their shoulders down. They never kind of think about the head and working and, and trying to make that as strong as possible. So um, that's one good thing that I've always been able to do in my, in my career. Um, you know, setbacks, poor performances with the, the work we've done and previously or whoever it may have, whoever, whoever I've worked with, you know, to on the mental side of the game, I've been able to shrug off disappointments quite well, setbacks and just keep moving forward in the right direction. But yeah, um, you know, having your head strong in this game is, is definitely a big, big part of it, um, you know, because there are highs and lows throughout your career for sure. And it's how you kind of bounce back from the Absolutely. disappointing moments. And, can, um, you know, when I look back throughout your career, you've had multiple promotions through every league division. Um, playing at Wembley. If if we're talking about performance under pressure, uh, Aston Villa, um, when we were there, uh, losing to Fulham 1-0 at Wembley and coming off with that knee injury, I seem to remember very vividly. Yeah. And then the very next year um, in the same yeah. fixture going up, performance under pressure. I want to talk to you about um, the coach, the coaching staff um, as building a culture of belief. And, and in many ways, there's a lot of psychology in the work, in the build-up to the game, um, what you know, just just not just specific to Aston Villa, yeah. but for other teams that you've played and been successful with, playing at Wembley and achieving promotions, what what when you cast your mind back, what have the some of the themes been, some of the things that you did as a as a, as a group of players, or things that the coaches did or said that helped you to prepare and be at your best when it mattered in those in those games. Yeah, funnily enough, I suppose the the two times of of been able to I've been fortunate enough to win at Wembley. Um, the you know you said that we lost to Fulham and then we had the kind of the that setback and and bounce back twelve months later. I think obviously the disappointment um, and the the learning that we took from the the, the defeat definitely um, stood us in good stead um, for the second final with Villa. Um, you know, it was a lot of the similar players. Um, there wasn't too much change. Um, you know, there was still five, six, seven of us that had lost the previous final. So um, I think it was a kind of you know just just taking lessons and learning from the, from the previous final. Definitely, you know, worked for us moving into the final against against Derby. Um, obviously, it was different coaching staff, so there was different kind of you know training sessions and all the rest of it leading up leading into it. But I think it was just purely the experience of um, of the previous final. And, and like I said, learning from it and, you know, using that kind of determination and the hunger to not wanting to have that, um, you know, bad result again. And same with Barnes, we won the Johnson Payne Trophy and um, two months later, we had another playoff, we had a playoff final then. And that was just that experience of the day, knowing, um, you know, how Wembley works and the atmosphere and the full house um, and having that a couple of months previous, you know, it made us feel really comfortable in the environment heading into the playoff final. So, um, just taking, you know, them kind of um, occasions and, and using them in the right way, you know, when the playoff yeah. finals come. Oh, well, I mean, one of the involved. things that I remember about you and, and continue to, obviously, as we continue to work together, is that you leave no stone unturned as a player. That's just who you are. It's how you live your life and you as a character. Um, and in many ways, I know you've been doing your UA for B and, and doing your coaching badges as well. Um, you know, in many ways, um, <clears throat> would you say that... Um, 
you have always sort of been a coach, a coach of yourself, a coach of the game, you know, interested in the game. I know you watch football outside religiously as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I suppose it's an obsession of mine. Um, absolutely love the game. Definitely going to stay in it when I'm finished. Um, you know, fortunate enough at the minute to be finished my B licence. I'm going to be moving on to my A sometime um, in 2022, probably summertime, maybe later on in the year. Um, and it's, yeah, as I get older, I suppose you, you try and get organised and you try and, and get yourself ready for that day when, when it creeps up when you, when you retire. Hopefully I've got a few years left in me yet, but um, yeah, it's uh, definitely something that I want to go into really passionate about. You know, uh, I've done a couple of coaching sessions with yourself, you know, take notes on what kind of coach I want to be and the manager I'd like to be. Um, as I move forward so yeah it's just something that I'm really passionate about and like there's a there's that obsession there you know I've, I've, I've done everything possible to you know have a career uh, in the game so far and that's the yeah. same kind of attitude so, I'll be taking in my there'll coaching be a lot of coaches well. interested in this from a player's perspective stepping into the boots of a coach what do you find the dif what are the differences yeah yeah it's 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 it's, it's a strange one because obviously you're so used to turning up kind of you know, four or five times a week and everything set out for you and you get handed the babe and you get told the, the, the session um, and all of a sudden you're kind of on the opposite side and you're the one handing out the bibs and planning the session and, and the dynamics of, you know, the square or the possession or how long you're going to play for or whatever it may be. Um, so it's just completely out your comfort zone and you're just, you're just on the flip side of it, you're on the opposite side of it um, and you think <laughs> it, it may be easy, but it's definitely, definitely not. Uh, you know, you learn, I'm learning on the job you know, when uh, when I take coaching sessions, um, you know, you've got 20, 25 different characters to to get hold of, to, to get the best out of. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a challenging job. Like I said, one, I'm new to it. So, like, I'm learning on the job, making mistakes, but one I'm really enjoying. And, um, yeah, one I'm kind of, the most important thing, like I said, I, I'm enjoying it. So, you know, if I went into it and I wasn't really enjoying it, I'd, you know, I wonder where I'd go from here, but, the, you know, I'm delighted that it's, I know that I'm enjoying it and something that I'm going to be And I mean, talking about, about your recent forward. experiences, Sheffield United um, seem to have been on a, a much better run as of late. You know I'm biased. You're back in the team. You're, you, you're playing well. The team are winning, uh, especially at the, uh, the weekend. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, without uh, going into too many details, obviously, but what would you say some of the things, um, how's that happened? How does that happen in football and generally in teams when they, you know, turn things around? Yeah, I just think at the minute, obviously, we're on a good run, change of manager. Um, you know, it's like in football, you get that new bounce from a new manager. Um, you know, Hickey obviously was in the building and, and was a bit of caretaker manager um, last year for a little bit. So he knows the players. Um, obviously, so it wasn't it wasn't new to him. Um, so he, he came in, hit the ground running. Um, probably went back to the, the way Sheffield United had played previously when they were successful. So, yeah, like I said, um, at the minute on a good run, long way to go in the season. And, uh, yeah, really enjoying it. Like I said, always nice when yeah. you're winning games. So, well, Connor, thanks very continue. much for your time this morning, mate. Um, I just want to finish off by letting everybody know that Connor will be no problem, us, pleasure. Uh, on Thursday, the 24th of February for the Future Coach uh, virtual seminar. Also joined by uh, head coach uh, of the England Under-21s, Lee Carsley, and um, head of coach development at Wolverhampton, uh, Wanderers, Mike Scott. And Connor's going to be going into more detail in that uh, Q&A that we have on the night. Uh, you can get tickets. They're available from TomBaseCoaching.com. Um, How's that for a sales pitch, mate? That wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. You're really, you're really driving Fantastic, this fair mate. play. Well, <laughs> we started off at a, we started off at about 180 people, and there's only 67 now, so that's not a good sign. <laughs> mate, great to see you. Have a good day off. <laughs> no problem. Pleasure. Look, look. Speak to you soon. Take care. Pleasure. See ya. Okay, guys, so uh, just to finish off, that was Conor Hurahan now on loan from Aston Villa um, and Sheffield United. And he'll be joining us, uh, as we mentioned there at the end, at the Future Coach Seminar on Thursday, the 24th uh, of February. If you are interested, if you are a coach or even a player going into coaching, uh, it's going to be a great seminar for everyone. Thanks very much for joining in. Um, there's so much love going through here on the comments. I'm sorry that we couldn't get to all of them. Um, but um, we'll certainly make sure that we ask some of these questions for you uh, on the night um, as part of the session with Connor.
Connor. All right. Uh, good morning. Have a great day, everyone who joined in. Good to see you all. God bless. Take care.